What is up guys, Fado82 coming at you with some vanilla Rust footage. This was Fatty Patty's base yesterday, and this is Fatty Patty's base this morning. The biggest difference here is that there's now a forward operating base or a raid base that has sprouted out of the landscape. These are small compact bases which house raiders and their supplies, as is the case here. And the raiders have already started to get to work. You'll notice one of the high exterior stone walls missing, and they've burrowed their way into Fatty Patty's base. So they're making progress in here and they're moving forward with rockets. Primarily rockets over C4 are used when raiding bases. And they're going straight into the core of the base to figure out then where they need to go. They're going to need to go up to access many of the loot rooms. But take note here, what they're really looking for are those building cabinets. Once you gain access to that, you have some privilege. Even if it's not the main cabinet, you will gain some privilege. And notice that they also walled it off, so this is a way for them to take over the base piece by piece. It could be considered griefing, but in my mind it's just a strategy of taking over the base. Their forward operating base or raid base has now come under attack by another group that's moving in. So they've attracted some attention. Even though it's early morning on Rustopia, they've attracted the attention of the Toxic Clan. Notice as Toxic moves in, they're throwing down those high exterior stone walls which shield them from the fire coming back their way from that raid base. We got some good gunfire going here and both sides seem to be fairly evenly matched. The Raiders had some numbers, but it looks like Toxic is bringing some numbers to the fight as well. I really like how as Toxic moves in, they are very aggressive. They're not holding back, and one of their members here is doing sort of an MVP play. Look at him running in the water there as a rocket hits that raid base, and he's making his way into that base that was being raided by the UR clan, which is the clan that has the uh, forward operating base here. We get some rockets being fired here, and these are the incendiary rockets, or the fire rockets as they're sometimes referred to. These are primarily used to suppress or direct players in a particular direction. They're not uh, the most damaging rockets, they're not primarily used for raiding bases, but they will keep players from going into the fire because the fire does damage them greatly. But notice they missed the high exterior stone wall a little bit there, so it sort of missed its mark. Uh, it wasn't quite as effective. Inside the base, there are three UR members who are holding strong in there. They're not moving from that location, so even though their forward operating base and their buddies are under attack, they are going to hold back in that base and uh, hopefully be able to surprise the Raiders when they come in. So notice here that Toxic, again, that speed and aggression, they took right to that forward operating base and raided it. They've broken through the barrier of the forward operating base. There's a high exterior stone wall and two doorways there, so it was airlocked. They've open that up and what the defenders you are really need to do here is throw down a, a door but it looks as though they were trying to just do a stopgap measure and put down a concrete barrier but that's quickly able to be dispatched by the toxic members. So I love this scene here toxic rushes in and this is one extended scene here without any cuts just slaughtering the UR members who are in here and just taking this forward operating base over. This guys out of all the raid camps I've done is the quickest I've ever seen a group move on a forward operating base. Toxic came in, they were focused, and they went for it, and they achieved exactly what they intended to achieve. Beautiful play by Toxic. So back inside again, we have some UR members in here. There's three of them. They have rocket launchers, AKs. One member has a shotgun for that CQB battle that's gonna go on in there. And Toxic has overtaken the raid base. They're spending some time to take out the spawn points in here, to look through the crates, and to secure this base as their own. They need to make sure they don't leave any respawn points in there because they don't want somebody to gain access to the cabinet and screw up despawn loot or screw them anyway. They are they have been trailed this entire time by a lone sniper here from the E4V clan. They've been giving Toxic some trouble this wipe and uh, it looks like they're hot on their tail here. There's only one member so far but even one sniper in a tower is very problematic and difficult to deal with. You can notice here that the shots are just missing that sniper as one of the Toxic members is now making their way into the base that was being raided. He has no idea though that there are UR members up top waiting for his approach. UR is anticipating a much greater approach than one player because their forward operating base was just taken over and presumably they are communicating with their members. But notice as that one Toxic member moves in here, they are sending a lot of rockets down there. So they blew uh, a big portion of their rockets on one player which um, is really no way they could have known there was only one player so they probably thought it was something more like uh you know five six players coming their way 
So those rockets no doubt attracted the attention of Toxic and they're now moving in in force, in formation, again with that speed and, and aggression right into that base that was being raided by UR. UR has an advantage here in that they have a choke point, a bottleneck to deal with here, which is this one pathway that's been opened up, which is really the only way for Toxic to get in unless they want to blow another way into the base. So at this point, this fight, even though it's disproportionate with the numbers because there's only three UR members left, you'll notice the Toxic members are going down very quickly. That's not anything to do with skill, it's just simply the design of the base and the dynamics of this situation. UR is doing a beautiful job here of using that choke point to their advantage, and even though they use a lot of rockets on one player, they appear to have a lot more to spare. So instead of progressing forward and burrowing further into the base, they've decided to stand their ground and fight Toxic. Now Toxic, even though they've taken over that raid base, they haven't put down many sleeping bags in there because they were anticipating that they most likely had all of the, uh, the members in that forward operating base neutralized. But as we can see, that wasn't the case, and there were three more in that main base that was being raided. It's now night. One Toxic member survived the rocket barrage and firefight in there, and he's down on the first floor trying to figure out exactly what to do next. He needs to get some of his teammates in there in order to smoke out the remaining UR members who are up there, and it's going to be a bit tricky to do, especially under the cover of night. If you guys are wondering why a player is running with a torch, it's a universal symbol of a teammate saying, don't shoot, uh, so sometimes players will hesitate, and it looks like that player was taken out. He may have been a UR member, I didn't catch the name tag, but it looks like he was shot by a Toxic member, so that may have been a UR member trying to come back and join his buddies. But notice again as Toxic tries to approach that they are taken out uh, one by one very methodically because of that pathway but the one member was able to get by his buddy was able to help boost him up and he's now up onto the second floor here so he's engaging with the UR members who were there on the second floor so through some strategizing and some planning they were able to get a member over there and work in teamwork and Toxic was able to get at least one player up to that point now but they're still having quite a difficult time here uh, one UR member is down there's two left up top as Toxic is trying to hold down the first floor. Again, get some intense CQB, close quarter combat going on in there, close quarter battle. And as the night progresses, it's being lit up by muzzle flashes. The rounds are firing left and right in here. And Toxic is advancing their position. They're moving up floors. And I believe there's only one UR member left here, but he's holding his ground. Love seeing this type of fight, guys. This is what Rust is all about. And he was actually taken out. The final kill shot is now delivered. And Toxic has now taken the base that was being raided from UR as well. So the last UR member has fallen. At this point in time, Toxic is able to loot both the what was what is left over in the main base that was being raided by UR, and then also that raid base as well. So they've probably acquired a bit of loot here. The decision that they have to make now is whether they want to continue forward with that raid. Looks like the base hadn't fully been raided because there were still players sleeping up top. Alright guys, really hope you enjoyed, as always, this raid cam. Had a lot of fun making it. As always, this is Vanilla Rust footage. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you think the defenders or raiders could have done anything different. And the UR clan members are back at their base regrouping. But be prepared, Fatty Patty might be bringing the fight your way. Peace.